Good morning. My name is Barbara Bynum, and it's my pleasure to be one of the forum facilitators, along with my friends Kathy Heavers, Phoebe Benzinger, and Judy Ann Biles. And all four of us are here. We're almost always all four of us are here, unless we have a conflict. Um, we love these as much as you guys do. Um, and it's fun to come away and learn something new. So this morning, without further ado, we have a great program about um, the Uncompadre River and the watershed there and all the different organizations, or I should say some of the organizations, there's probably many more, but some of the organizations that are working hard to protect that river corridor. Um, credit really goes to perhaps the League of Women Voters who put this program together two months ago and Forum heard, oh, it was really great, you guys should have them. And so I reached out and the four people who did that presentation agreed to come and give Forum the presentation. And those four folks are Tanya Ishikawa, who's the Executive Director of the Uncompadre Watershed Partnership, Mindy Stewart, who's the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Chabonneau Conservation District, Joel Evans, President of the Gunnison Gorge Anglers Chapter of Trout Unlimited, and Melanie Reese, Board President of Friends of the River Uncompadre. And I'm gonna let them each tell um, you a little bit about themselves. They're gonna each aim for 10 minutes so that we have time for questions at the end. And so, first up is Tanya. Hello. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you. Um, so, as she said, Tanya Ishikawa. I'd like to let you know my last name, Ishikawa, is Japanese, and Ishi is rock, and Kawa is river. So, I am naturally <laughs> someone who should be talking about this. <laughs> Of course, that's not my board name, um, although my board name is Reinhardt, and that's also the um, Rhine River in Germany is what that was, part of what was, that was named after. So once again, I think this was uh, meant to be in the future. Um, I have a background in journalism and public relations, and then I moved, um, I grew up on the Western Slope. I wanted to mention that my, one of my first memories of the river on the rest, Western Slope was uh, rafting the Dolores with Oscar Goldman from the uh, Six Million Dollar Man. He was a parent of somebody in my class when I was growing up, and he actually pulled me out of the river when the rapids put me into the river. So <laughs> that's like a good memory of mine. <laughs> um, so there's me there too as well. Um, I moved here, uh, to, uh, to, my parents moved to this area of Colorado in 92, and I moved in with them in 2014. Um, which is in Kelowna. And um, shortly after that, I got a job with the Compagre Watershed Partnership as communications director. And just this year in January, I became executive director, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, we've been doing a lot over these last few years, and um, we're really excited now what's coming up in the next few years. Um, so uh, I put that first slide, why, why do we care about it, because our uh, our theme today was taking care of the watershed, and I wanted to tell you a bit about that today. Um, one reason we care about our river and the watershed is all the different uses that we have. Um, agriculture being um, the biggest use of our water in the watershed, and you know, from ranching, livestock, um, growing hay, um, food production and such, um, to residential, commercial, uh, that you know, different parts of our watershed are used for drinking. That's important to find out because um, the Uncompadre River, as I'll be telling you about, upstream of the reservoir has a lot of metals in it. And um, so people want to know where the drinking water is coming from. And it's actually not from the Uncompadre River up that way. We have streams and other springs that um, the water comes from. This is actually Lake Otonawanda, which is one of the biggest sources for Ridgeway's water. Um, commercial use and recreation, of course. We love our watershed and river for the recreation. Everything from paddling to fishing to um, recreating around it, our waterfalls and photography, all that. Oops. And I think one reason we get worried about our watershed is we see um, pictures like that, or we drive by the reservoir on certain years and it's looking that low. Um, so, um, yeah, just. I think this is one of the things that makes people start talking about our water. Another thing, uh, I'm a little bit too quick on the, yes. 
Um, that was actually, was it last year? Yeah, last September, um, a bunch of sediment came down the river. That's just right above Ridgeway Reservoir. And you know, most people don't imagine that the river looks that orange. That's like not a doctored photo. It was literally that orange for a few hours on that day. It's, uh, there was, um, I called around the county and all different places and nobody actually knew why that had happened. But we kind of figured out later that it must have just been a flash flood down one of the canyons that has a lot of red rock and it just happened to put that much red into the river at that point. It was gone by like five in the afternoon. So um, I wanted to, in mind, not just tell you about my organization, but that's why I picked to be the first one to talk, to tell you a little bit more about the river itself and the watershed to give you a little background as well. Um, so we are, as you know, a tributary of the upper, the Colorado River, and we are tributary through the Gunnison River. So um, uh, we're a tertiary, uh, third order stream, meaning we, um, the ocean, is there, and then there's the Colorado River, and then there's the Gunnison River, and then the third stream away is the Uncompahgre River. Um, and so we're considered in the Gun Gunnison River Basin. And, but I just wanted to point out, as I think people in Montrose know pretty well, um, it's interesting because we're a tributary to the Gunnison River, but the Gunnison River is also a tributary to us. <laughs> um, not directly, because we have canals and other things that get it there. Um, but um, through the South Canal and, and I believe the Deep Canal as well, um, we get water from the Gunnison River, which is pretty unusual um, for, I think, a river our size and pretty innovative for this area. Um, and then I skipped the side slide that says, where are the headwaters? And went straight to where they are, so no secret now. <laughs> Lake Como is um, where our headwaters for the Incompatory River are, it is. And it's right up um, near Silverton. Our watershed goes from a pretty high elevation, above 14,000 feet, to a pretty low elevation, well, low elevation for our area, 4,900. So um, a lot of drop in our river to the watershed. Um, it is 75 miles long um, from that headwaters to where it meets um, in Delta. And um, there are seven counties, which is quite a lot that touch. And, um, and put that question there so you can start thinking which counties does it go to? As we know, Montrose and Uray, that's where our watershed group is based, and Delta. Um, other ones, in the upper, the, it touches parts of the Hinsdale, San Juan, San Miguel, and Uray counties. That doesn't mean the river itself runs through those counties, um, but tributaries to it um, go um, through those counties. And then in the lower, we mentioned those, and even Gunnison we touched. So, um, oh, that's, yeah, I am going way too fast on this. It's so jumpy. Okay, there we are. Um, so, in 2007, um, the Uncompahgre Watershed Partnership was created in Ridgeway and Uray. And it was, um, at that time, just a citizens group. And we um, got together and people were like, let's study the watershed because it hadn't actually had a plan before. No stream management plan had been done in our watershed. So um, a group got together and said, let's you know, figure out what is here and, and whether there are issues. So um, what it, the first big project that we did was in 2012, we hired a scientist, Agnieszka Kreslowska, who lives up in Ridgeway, and um, she's a PhD um, graduate and she um, helped lead the study for our group. And the purpose was to identify, characterize our watershed and identify problems in the watershed, if any, and consider remediation methods to improve the watershed. Um, and we updated it in 2018 as well. So, I will get this up. So, um, problems identified um, in the watershed. So some of them have both to do the lower and the upper watershed. And when I talk about lower and upper, I'm talking upstream and downstream. And mainly, downstream of the reservoir is the downstream lower. And upstream of the Ridgeway Reservoir is the upstream. And so some of these problems we found were in um, all parts of the watershed. Um, but then, you know, the reservoir changes the watershed. Plus, um, it also happens to be at a spot that below it, a lot of the um, the geography changes in our watershed and geology. And so um, not only does the reservoir catch a lot of the metals that are coming down 
um, from upstream and um, you know it settles out in the sediment there so that changes and then the water coming out of the reservoir is much cleaner and a great fishing area. Um, but the ranching and um, the farming and, and such below the reservoir changes um, a bit um, of how the water is used. So um, in the lower watershed, some of the problems which um, Shabana Conservation District will, um, deals with and um, some of these organizations down here are like selenium, for instance, and trying to um, get rid of the selenium or, or um, yeah. And so those, we don't have so much up in the upper watershed. A little bit, but not much. And in the upper watershed, it's those metals I was talking about, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. And our, you know, the, with the smaller tributaries up there, we also have seasonal flows that um, get lower and lower. And so, you know, some, some streams are even ephemeral. So those are different issues that you don't necessarily have down in the lower watershed where more water is flowing in. And by the time you get down here, there's um, a lot more capacity. About two minutes. Okay, two minutes, wow. Okay, so we decided to concentrate our efforts since we're based in Uray County in the upper watershed. And here is our board members. Dennis Murphy is one of our board members here. He's here in the audience. He's been a long time board member. And um, he's our board president actually right now. And we have, these are our staff members down at the bottom. And we have two scientists, me as the communications and administrative and a bookkeeper. Um, so our mission is to protect and improve the assets of the watershed. And we do that through five different goals. And one of them, the goal that you just missed, is by improving and monitoring water quality. And one way we do that is through abandoned mine site restoration. We also um, address uh, sediment loading in the water when we can. We're, we're just developing projects for that. Um, then goal two is improve and maintain riverine ecos ecosystems. Mainly that's improving riparian areas. So we do that through cleanups and um, tree plantings, weedings, um, weed removal. Our goal three is improving seasonal low flows and water supply. This was developed in the watershed plan. So right now we're actually doing a strategic planning and we're trying to see um, you know, how we can address these goals. Um, in the past, how we've addressed this one is promoting water conservation and efficient use of water. And then, and I can't get, get these very well, um, this uh, goal four is education. So we try and educate the community about <coughs> water, being a watershed steward. And so Riverfest, D Dennis is right there actually teaching people about the floods in the water. And we have this guide that we put out a couple of years ago, which is available online. And, um, and in print, and so <coughs> you up some time that tells you a bit about water quality and, and uses of the water and different water science. And goal five is um, sustainable recreation. We're trying to support um, sustainable recreation um, projects. For instance, um, to improve fish habitat or to uh, provide access to rivers provide um, information about being safe on the rivers, uh, etiquette about not trespassing on property and such. Um, and I know I'm out of time, so <laughs> I don't have time to go through the rest, but um, like I said, historic mine drainage is a big um, problem in our watershed. Our opportunities are many, and I can answer those later. And right now, as I said, we're doing a strategic planning process and um, this is our fourth time to do strategic planning. And this is a big one because it's our 10th anniversary of existing as a nonprofit. And so we appreciate your um, participation in some of that. And uh, if you ask me later, I can tell you what kind of activities we're doing to um, tell people about what kind of projects we're thinking about doing in the future. Thank you very much. I do the education and outreach uh, for Shavano Conservation District. Our organized, well, first I should start about me. So uh, I grew up on the Front Range and I married a Montrose cowboy. And uh, we raised um, cows, a cow calf operation in Olathe. Um, my background in education was actually history and museum studies. 
uh, when I began working for the Shavano Conservation District, my museum uh, lost its walls, basically. Um, I was outside, and the artifacts now were the soil and water, plants, animals, minerals, and the air. So, um, our district, um, okay, so the conservation district started out of the Dust Bowl, and it was the uh, farmers and ranchers coming together to address the conservation, the natural resource concerns that they had, and at that point, it was erosion from the Dust Bowl, and uh, we started in 1941 for the Chavano Conservation District. Uh, you can see our area here. Let's see, that's the watershed. There we go. Okay. So, um, originally it was four different conservation districts, and they came together in about the 1960s, and then here just a couple years ago, we also combined with the San Miguel Basin Conservation District. So now we've expanded quite a bit there, just in the recent history. We partner quite a lot with our watershed uh, for our purposes. Um, the, it's the conservation districts within our watershed area. So um, we partner with Delta Conservation District and Denison. And you can see there the area that we take up. And our board of supervisors, it's uh, publicly elected supervisors, a board of eight people, and they cover different areas within our district. Well, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing one. There we go. Goals. Okay, so um, our goals as a district, we work with agriculture is our focus with the natural resources. Um, so we work to assist the stakeholders in providing natural resource information to protect those resources, such as water quality and quality, improving soil health, fostering range management, and weed control. We do that through forums and workshops and educational events uh, for both adults and youth. And um, one of the big issues that we have in this area is the salinity control and time, trying to reduce the amount of salinity that is washed out of our soils downriver, uh, down the Uncompahgre and then on down to the Colorado River. Okay, our financial report um, here. You can see we've got a um, pretty good little reserve there. Most of that came through previous activities that we had. Um, we owned some large equipment for land leveling and um, for assisting with the Natural Resources um, Conservation Service with the Department of Agriculture when they put in cost share programs for irrigation systems. And so we helped by providing some of that large equipment um, at a cost and was able to uh, earn some money there. However, we don't have that equipment anymore. And so now we're using a lot of the grants in order to keep the funding um, without just wiping out our savings all, in, all at once. Okay, on this slide you'll see the tax revenue that comes in from each of the counties that we are a part of. Um, but the important thing here, not just the tax revenue off of agriculture, but that we do not receive any mill levy tax dollars. So we are a special district and could go to the voters to request a mill levy. Have not done that at this point. Um, Kind of like the Colorado River District recently had their mill levy. That's the same that we um, should we decide to campaign for that. Okay, so uh, some of our projects that we do, we have a weed management program that we're working with the watershed with Delta Conservation and Gunnison Conservation on and that we're focusing on the Russian knapweed and Canada thistle. 
they have some biological controls, uh, rust and a little bug that will attack those plants and only those plants. And so right now it's more at a research stage where we've had um, some test plots and we're partnering with the Palisade Insectary. They've released the little bugs that attack the plant and then over the next couple of years they're gonna go back and see how effective it is uh, to see if it's something that we could do on a bigger scale throughout our district. And then, as I said, we merged with the San Miguel Basin Conservation District recently. Okay, our concerns. Uh, oh, I didn't get that out. Okay, so each year we have a local work group meeting, and with that is is having our um, landowners, the farmers and ranchers in the area, at our annual meeting. We um, ask them what their concerns are. Right. The, we want to know what their natural resource concerns are, and then with that feedback, then we work with them to find solutions to that. So our number one concern is, of course, water quantity and quality. And so uh, we partner with the NRCS for putting in the irrigation systems that will reduce the amount of salinity that gets washed down river. One of our employees is a engineer technician, and she works with the NRCS engineers for designing these systems. And then our next uh, concern is soil health, and just um, conserving that soil that we depend on for our food and fibers. Uh, and we promote the soil, the principles of soil health, keeping the soil covered, not disturbing it, um, keeping a live root in the ground, livestock integration, and reducing erosion. <coughs> All of that helps by increasing the organic matter in the soil, which then has a larger water holding capacity. So it also helps to mitigate drought uh, when there isn't much water. Okay, and then of course the salinity control, as I mentioned, trying to keep those salts and selenium from going down river. Uh, our education programs, as I mentioned, the local work group meeting, we do field tours. Uh, we did a tour in <coughs> San Miguel Basin, or San Miguel County, over around Norwood on composting here just the last week. And, um, uh, the Soil Health Conference, which we've actually merged with the um, Food and Farm Forum now, and have a two-day conference with the two of those. Yeah. And then we have kids' education programs as well. Uh, what used to be the Water Festival for fourth graders, we now call it the Natural Resource Festival, and it is somewhere on uh, 27 years, I think, something like that, which is exciting because if you grew up in Montrose, we're now going to the next generation. So our first fourth graders that came through that now have kids going through the festival. Okay, and then we also um, have three flood control dams that we, man that we manage. Um, and so when Chavano Conservation District was first formed in 1941, their purpose for forming was to uh, build a dam be to reduce the flooding that would go through the valley there and just wipe out the fields. And it took them until, I think, somewhere in the 1980s to actually get that dam formed. Um, but we do have the two of them, and then one in Olathe, the rope cap. And actually, the rope cap dam, uh, the county uh, proved a subdivision in the flood, the spillway of that dam, and so that has um, caused a little bit more work and expense to us because it's now considered a high priority dam that could have potential loss of life if there was a flash flood and the dam broke. So we manage it, we do vegetation control, um, prairie dog control, and uh, make sure that the spillways are cleaned out and nothing that's going to block. Yeah, 
So that's the Shamanu Conservation Museum. Hello, I'm Joel Evans. I'm the president of Gunnison Gorge Anglers, which is a chapter of national organization, Trout Unlimited. I'll uh, explain a little more about that as we go. My background, uh, moved Montrose in 1980, typical story. My dad uh, got me into fishing as a kid, and I wanted to be somewhere where there was recreation, and dad was connected to Colorado and fishing, so I moved to Montrose for work, and I remember the now defunct Colorado Ute Electric Association, Electric Utility, that's where I initially worked for a number of years before that went to bankruptcy and is gone, but I'm still here. So <laughs> I found other work and uh, recently retired uh, from a financial advisor career. But over those decades, I've always been interested in uh, fishing and how that relates to our rivers and environments. So uh, uh, Gunnison Gorge Anglers uh, is a chapter of Trout Unlimited. I won't read and go through this, but I want to emphasize um, Trout Unlimited and how it relates to this program today and now from Padre is not a fishing club. People who are members generally are fisher people, men and women. However, because the work we do is conservation, environmental, water, uh, endangered uh, fish and so forth, uh, some of our members don't fish at all. They're in the organization because they have other uh, common interests related to fishing. Uh, Trout Unlimited has been around a long time. There's a national level. There's, oh uh, boy, here we go. Skip, skip around. So our local chapter, there's also a, I'm sure it skipped something. Here, you want me to try and, like that? Yeah, that's the next one there. There we go. Okay, thank you. So we do have them a local chapter, and they're all over the United States, but being trout fisheries, trout's a cold water fish, so Trout Unlimited is primarily based in cold water mountainous areas throughout the uh, east, uh, west coast, and the Rocky Mountain states, so not so much, you know, Florida and the south, where it's warm water. So our communities, we cover geographically a pretty large area, so Montrose and Delta is kind of the center of it, but we also cover the North Fork Valley. So that's Hotchkiss, Paonia, Cedar Edge, and then south to uh, Ridgeway and uh, Telluride. Uh, so multiple rivers in that, Gunnison, Padre, Cimarron, San Miguel. And our mission relates to working with not just fish and fishing, but how to do educational, environmental, water quality, I use the words water quality and water quantity, two very different things. Past projects we've been involved in, so been around for 40 plus years. We started in 1983. This year, uh, specifically, is our 40th anniversary for the uh, local chapter. So we've been at it a long time in the area. We've done uh, work on the East Fork of Dallas Creek. That's the trailhead for Sniffles on this uh, northern side so um, if you go up that way you won't really notice anything but we've been there and done some work uh, in the past uh, locally here in town Chapita lakes that says lakes it's actually singular now uh, many years ago Chapita was three <coughs> separate lakes and uh, had a, a flood issue was restored and it's now one, so we've done that. And other uh, different projects there, I'm not going to a focus mention two particularly, uh, because we're talking about the Uncompagre. We've done other past work on the Uncompagre right here in town, so uh, socially, economically, marketing, the water park gets a lot of attention, but upstream and downstream of the water park, the river bottom, and other sections of the Uncompagre River within the city limits has had major stream improvement work. So I'm talking about heavy equipment going into the river, 
altering the river channel, not just putting in riprap and rocks, but making it a natural environment for fish habitat, which fish habitat is good for a lot of other reasons for water quantity and quality. Uh, one of our major projects many years ago was the uh, Paco Chupac tailwater below Ridgeway Reservoir. That was a project that was initiated by Gunnison Gorge Anglers. We put our seed money into it. Of course, as a small local nonprofit, most of these projects, we don't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars to do the project, so we're an instigator uh, using, like many nonprofits, our $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 budget to get something started and further work with uh, grants and partnerships, most notably in the Montrose specific area and Uncompahgre. We're talking about partnerships with the City of Montrose, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, Bureau of Land Management, those multiple different uh, agencies that uh, you can imagine anytime you're talking about going digging in a river and you're talking about fish and rocks and stuff you have to get all kinds of permits and so the money has historically come from those larger agencies this is the uh, Paco Chupac stream restoration you can see some rocks there uh, that not only helps with water quantity and quality of the flow but of course the fishing uh, we've done work with um, multiple uh, local other uh, organizations including the uh, schools, Project Healing Waters is a veterans organization, um, the uh, local outfitters, sometimes we get involved in regulations and fishing and floating regulations. We've had fly fishing shows. One project's going on right now, Trout in the Classroom, just a brief mention, that's a relatively new type of um, Educational outreach, this is done nationally through Trout Unlimited. We do have a school of Montrose, the Peak, that's working with the Trout in the Classroom. They get an aquarium. So just like you raise tropical fish, uh, get some fish from the pet store and have an aquarium at home, the schools have a large aquarium where they get trout eggs from Colorado Parks and Wildlife, raise those trout to a size, small, several inches where they can then be released into the river. So it's not about uh, growing fish, it's about, of course, the education and science and biology. So those are the kind of things that try to limit it. So when you think going fishing, again, that's not what try to limit it about. Try to limit it is about doing things local, both with the river and people. Um, this is an event we held each year with the um, Delta schools, and they have um, uh, programs uh, both at uh, Confluence Lake and Delta, and then we also have work with uh, Bureau of Land Management and others put together a program, go down, actually, they bus kids down to the uh, Gunnison River and uh, talk to them about uh, science and entomology and so forth. Uh, this is a river cleanup we did uh, recently uh, for the Uncompahgre River. So uh, uh, our group and others, such as uh, For You and uh, uh, many people in the community are interested uh, not just in the river itself, I'm talking about the standing in the river, the water, but outside the water and what goes on uh, with the river. Uh, this is a picture of the pond uh, at uh, Ridgeway Reservoir, below the reservoir. So kids fishing is uh, important to us. So, yeah, okay. So that one, what's that about? Not skiing. What's in the picture that's not skiing? Snow, yeah. So that's kind of where I want to leave you. Uh, again, what we do is travel limited. It has to do with fish. It has to do with restoring native species. It has to do with going into the town of Montrose, hiring a company that will do rock and channel work to make a better fishery. But as uh, Tanya and, and uh, others have mentioned, it's the water. If we don't, how do we go fishing? Gotta have water, right? And you're gonna have fish in the water, it has to be clean water. 
and there has to be some quantity of water. So certainly in western Colorado, where we deal with really a semi-arid uh, environment that locally highly green and supplemented by the uh, diversions from the Gunnison River through the canal for irrigation, very, very important. So Travelant is very, very interested in partnering, working with all of those communities, uh, farming, ranching, agricultural cities, municipalities, water, drinking water. That all matters because if we don't do all that, then there's not a quantity of water, there's not clean water, as was mentioned about Ridgeway Reservoir trapping sediments. If you don't have all that, then well, you don't have fishing. So, yeah. One leads to the other. Thank you. I'm Melanie Reese. I grew up in the Southern Appalachians on a river, a tributary to the Chattahoochee. I lived in Colorado now 40 years. The last six of those were in Montreux. My work background really has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. My work background was in economic development and workforce housing, uh, but I'm now retired. And throughout my career, I did volunteer with groups such as who were recreation oriented. I headed up the Boulder chapter of the Colorado Mountain Club, and also conservation oriented. My last 15 years from moving here, I lived in the Gunnison Valley and served two four-year terms in the Gunnison Valley, uh, in Gunnison Watershed Weed Commission. So I know we've talked, heard a lot about weeds already in these slides, and uh, we're gonna hear more about them. Um, <clears throat> we are friends of the river from Compadre. We are for you. Our mission is to be restoring, enhancing, and protecting the Don Compadre River Corridor through stewardship, advocacy, partnerships, and education. Um, we are basically a conservation organization that our motivation, what it motivates and enables us in many ways, is recreation. We know that the more people know our river, our river corridor, the more people that enjoy our river corridor, the more people that love it and take care of it. I got to know this river through exploring the many trails through Montrose, winding up and down on the mesa and through the water's edge with my dog and from the seat of my kayak. And so we will be serving recreationists as well as conservationists and we, I think, all of us, at least on this panel, know those things go hand in hand. About our history, 4U was first established in 2006. We have two original board members sitting here, Jim and Dennis. Thank you for coming today. They accomplished much in about a decade. This is an impressive list, one that I think will serve this community well over many years is the overlay zone, creating a buffer between the river and new development, so that as we grow, the river will stay the gym that it is. Um, the water sports park, I don't know if any of you went to the Funk Fest this weekend, but it's an incredible asset to this community. Um, the uh, Riverway Master Plan that was completed in 2011 has guided many activities, and if you read that plan, you'll see that with amazement, many of the things called for in that plan have been done. It's really an impressive list of what's been accomplished in recent years, much because of 4U's motivation, financial support, and just sheer energy and dedication of the group of people that were originally involved. What we do now, uh, well, we're trying to figure that out, to be honest. We've gotten a good start. But we'd love to hear from you over time because we will be looking at and uh, developing a strategic plan over this winter. We appreciate any ideas and input you have to offer. We are starting out with a bang, however. We are restoring our river in partnership with Rivers Edge West, which is based in Grand Junction but works throughout uh, the western states, uh, helping preserve river corridors, largely attacking invasive species 
that are out to destroy biodiversity, out to uh, add salt, the salt cedar being one of them, the tamarisk. Um, and so they've got uh, funding from several sources, including the city of Montrose, a $10,000 match that helped them enable to get other grant funding that are coming in um, with a crew this fall and another crew next spring. Uh, well, we're not exactly sure of the timing next year, but they're coming in back in 2024, ta attacking Russian olives and tamarisk. Um, I learned this weekend that I don't really need to spend a lot of time telling you about why these are bad. You live here, you know. Uh, we've heard a lot about how much uh, the Uncle Pagre contributes to agriculture, but believe me, spreading seeds from invasive plants over approximately 80,000 acres of land irrigated by this river is a bad thing, one of many. Uh, we, for you, is going to be with volunteers, we're entirely a volunteer organization, uh, will be coming back and working hand in hand with these guys to plant natives. So our first project's coming up September 30th. We'd love to see you there. Um, and in 2024, we will be working along the Colorado Outdoors uh, River Corridor. Uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Russian olives through there. We are also river caretakers um, in that we are removing uh, obstacles and safety hazards. Uh, we don't do this alone. The city has been very responsive, but maybe we're the ones that let them know that something needs to be done. Uh, but we have, and I've got a volunteer here that when I have holes in riverside trails, he's probably still got a sore back from having done some of that. Thank you, John. Um, we do cleanups and trail maintenance, and a cleanup back in May of 2021 that I organized with support from the city and uh, four other organizations and shops in Montrose attracted 74 volunteers. We had, <laughs> we had a pile of trash that would probably take up this whole area here. Thankfully, the city brought in a truck compactor truck and hauled it all away, but that just led me to uh, or confirmed what I suspected, and that is that people in this town love this river and given the opportunity, will help take care of it. We are also river guardians. We see this role as really being a place um, that will sustain us over time. Us as a community, we know we're gonna grow. We know that there are opportunity parcels along this river that are not developed. We know we have access to them now. We know we need to protect recreation, public access to these lands, and we know that they need to be sensitive to our river as these lands develop, and we are here to try to help with that. We do have volunteer opportunities. Just one I'd like to highlight is photographs. I don't have any photographs in this slide show, as you've probably seen, so if any of you guys <laughs> out there would ever want to send a photo our way that we could utilize in slides like this would really appreciate that uh, and we are also looking for friends we're no cost we're not a membership organization we are friends of this river um, by signing up we just send you emails uh, on news and volunteer opportunities and by signing up you help us demonstrate that um, we have influence we can get grants, and we can have a voice. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, this is on. There we go. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to make sure to save time for questions, so thanks everyone for being prompt with your presentations. It's really hard to get four people in an hour and not run right up against nine o'clock. So I think let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Let me pass around the mic because I know that folks have questions and you may have a question and you're not exactly sure who it's for or you don't remember their name, that's okay. Ask your question and they'll know who's the best person to answer it. I've been a resident of 
Lamont Rose since 1958, and and back at that time, uh, Gungampagi wasn't considered a, a really great place to fish. But I'm interested now in finding out, you know, uh, how much of the river restoration has improved the fishing, and how much stocking is done in the Gungampagi uh, to improve the fishing. Uh, well, um, long story short, it's very different than 1958. I, I wasn't here then. I came in 1980, and you didn't go to the Uncompagre to fish generally. Uh, you know, there's the canal that uh, comes from the Gunnison through the tunnel, and it has always created an artificial fishery, if you will, stocks the Uncompagre River. Um, that's changed a lot over the years, not so much so, but to offset that, um, primarily Ridgeway Reservoir has changed, not only for fishing, but a lot of things, but by settling out metals and other water quality um, factors, the, the river is clean enough that it does support a good population of fish such that they even naturally, some of them spawn in the river. I'm talking uh, below Ridgeway Reservoir. And then talk about access, uh, not very much access for the Uncompagre River for public fishing. There's Pakachipuk uh, below the reservoir. There's Billy Creek, which is incidentally a project we're working on this year, and then in the town of Montrose. So, the opportunity is a little bit limited just because of access, but the fish are there now. It's a very good fishery, actually, and the Colorado Outdoors recent project, uh, very, very significant, not only in terms of the linear footage of the river that once was private and inaccessible, now public, and the stream improvements that were done there that try to limit it, uh, but through the city and Colorado parks and grants and so forth, it's it's pretty good fishing now. So you don't have to leave town to find fishing in Cimarron and the Gus and so forth. It's it's pretty good right in town now. During the summer, the irrigation high flows challenge that, but it shoulder summer uh, spring and fall pretty good place. You guys are usually really good with questions. <laughs> because it's a little overwhelming. Lots of different organizations working on that river, huh? <laughs> 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 Thank you. A fallback question. This is for the Shavano uh, Conservation District. So you don't get any, uh, any federal money or tax money for your work? We do not. Uh, we do get... Um, grant funding through the Colorado State Conservation Board. And some of their funding, um, I believe, ultimately comes from NRCS, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, as part of the Department of Agriculture. Um, but um, this last year, I think it was like $10,000 was our grant. And so that was the only government money that we got. Um, we did, we also have a business, um, an office building that we lease business spaces out of, the Shavano building on North 2nd, North 1st. Anyhow, um, so that does provide some funding um, for my salary and the district manager's salary, but all of the rest of it we depend on for grants. So, um, <clears throat> have you been following the, uh, uh, the rule change by the BLM? looking at creating uh, conservation allotments? No, I can't so say that. This would be unused allotments that work for other, other reasons, uh, not, not being used, overgrazed or whatever. Uh, and you, you haven't heard about this. You might want to take a look at that because it might be an opportunity to um, enlist uh, the support for agricultural people as well as conservationists in meeting the same goal. Okay, thank you. I heard 
mention of the uh, city, or not the city, the area um, for water, that they bought land and they're going to be taking water from the Ridgeway Reservoir for our drinking water. And I've heard concerns mentioned today about the purpose or one of the advantages of the reservoir of allowing the heavy metals to uh, settle out. Is there any concern by anybody on the, of the speaking group about the use of the water for city drinking water? Any of you feel like you can answer that? Um, I'm not sure how well I can answer, but I mean, it is Project 7 doing it who's, you know, been delivering water in the area for quite a long time. So I haven't seen the studies that they've done, but I know that they have been studying how to, you know, get the water from the reservoir to do it safely and that they will, you know, be, that they're building a treatment plant there to begin with. So, I mean, um, so they are taking uh, precautions and it, it's still actually a long ways out. That's probably a good thing for people to be constantly telling them as they're, you know, designing their plant and getting that up and running is that they do care about the water quality as well. But um, uh, yeah, I, I would say they, if they wouldn't be building it there if they didn't, you know, have a, um, have a way of protecting the water. And as people have said, you know, since the metals do settle out, We've done a little bit of studying of the, um, the water quality there. I don't have those numbers with me. Every time we do some kind of a study, it's so complex, you know, because you know it's a snapshot in time, and so it's hard to like say, okay, just because this one time we saw more metals in the water, like two months from now it'll be the same. It changes so much seasonally and such. That's my bureaucratic answer for you. <laughs> I'll add that when Project 7 came here and talked, they um, they mentioned that the water coming off the bridgeway was much harder than the um, water coming out of the Gunnison, and therefore they were gonna do water softening at the water treatment plant so that the water would be the same. I had a question. Um, what is your interpretation of the word watershed rather than river? I know this was the Uncompahgre River was mentioned, and then the Uncompahgre Watershed. Uh, well, anybody can join in, but typically when we talk about watershed, now let me start with the river. When you talk about the river, you're talking just the river up to its banks within maybe its high water mark. That's the definition I would make of the river itself. And then, of course, every river has its start and end, as Tanya went through, the Uncle specifically has multiple tributaries. Cow Creek is one that flows in just below Ridgeway Reservoir, and East Dallas Creek comes in from the west of the Dallas Divide. So that would be the watershed. So the watershed is the geographic area away from the river, including all the way in our case, uh, in the mountains, you have high elevation springs, creeks that turn into streams, streams that turn into rivers, and so forth. It all collects over the geographic area that encompasses much, much more than the river itself. So the rivers, the water in the rivers and high banks, the watershed is the entire basin, the Uncle Padre River starting in the San Juan mountains gathering water all the way before it ends at Delta. That's the watershed of the Uncompahgre, which is a subset of the Gunnison River watershed. So if I were talking about the Gunnison River watershed, the Uncompahgre watershed would just be one part of the larger Gunnison watershed all the way from the town of Gunnison to other tributaries at the North Fork and so forth. Did you have a question right next? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with all this talk about um, settling out the metals and all the other talk about where we're going to find the stuff to make chips, uh, 
Who might want these medals, or what might they be used for? <laughs> oh, anyone you want to take that? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I mean, it is a good question, maybe even to ask, you know, people operating the reservoir, you know, at some point, what, would, what do you want to do with that sediment? Because <laughs> it keeps on, you know, going in there. Um, but there are, yeah, I mean, there's local mining companies even interested, in not the metals in the reservoir, but in other metals. As um, our, you know, our watershed, like the metals come from the legacy mines that have been in the area, so the waste rock and the tailings, and running through the adits and the mines, um, creating the acid drainage, which puts metal into the water. And um, there are some companies who are now considering taking some of those piles and trying to reprocess them to get some of those precious metals. Um, it hasn't gotten very far yet. Um, one of the, I just wanted to talk about this because it gave me a chance to talk more about acid mining drainage or heavy metals, which is such a big deal because it impacts our watershed so much. Um, but um, Revenue Virginia's mine, that was one of the things that I had on my slide that I didn't get to talk about. It's unfortunate because that company went bankrupt. So now, um, you know, nobody's really running that operation that was going to be mined, you know, in the last couple of years and just never got going. Um, it did just go up for auction, so a buyer did buy it, and we'll see what they do with um, with the the rocks in their area. We hope that they really take care of it well because um, we don't want new mines creating the problems that legacy mines created. Those legacy mines, you know, they, they happened before the EPA and before the 1970s and all the laws that protected us and, and, and old technology when people weren't thinking about these things. And um, so now we do have those protections. Um, but it's not actually managed properly. <laughs> Okay, I think Judy Ann Files is gonna tell us about next week, um, but before then, one more quick piece of information. I failed to recognize Ralph Files, who was one of the original 4U members, and we did a lot, and both of them supported a lot, so much, and done so much for our river, and for 4 you. thank you very much. <laughs> I was going to say, before you tell us what's next week.